How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. There's a couple of weeks break in front of us, but behind us, we've just left the Premier League on top and we've just left the Champions League through to the quarterfinal stages after a 1-0 win, after 90, after 120 and then a penalty shootout win. Big up James Bang on with every single um facet of his prediction of that game which we'll get into later anyway yeah he didn't tell us who was going to take the penalties and he didn't also say what the score in the penalty shootout was going to be like you know fair, fair. Sorry, next that's, time that's, that's true that's true it's true, <laughs> true <isn't> it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. he you said know, so. on penalties i might be considering an extra point but he didn't yeah, yeah a few right. people have been knocking at the door saying you know maybe james deserves an extra point i'm here to say no uh, i don't think he does um, no, no, we 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 agree. Now, I'm, listen, I'm a very fair person. What happened with that community shield point was a disgrace, and we know that. But we established the position before, and I will gladly accept my three points with no add-ons. All up yeah, you you were just about to be docked one as well. If, if very people close. knew what was, yeah, very close. Very. I close. came in swigging. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he, he was quite flustered as well. It just shows that you were just trying to try to. Cut out. I went in the group to check if you read the link, and you hadn't even read it yet. I told these two, and they was like, "All right, yeah, let's, let's." Yeah. What's it like Lee, for the Lee, whole show? Lee was licking his lips, thinking <laughs> it, was, um... it, it was it was going to be another good night. It was going to be a good night. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> but I did, hold on, I, I'm glad that I was in the uh, in the chat room and uh, that because I see a different side of him up there. I'll tell you, yeah. like, I mean, like, like. <laughs> well, you're, you're all my friends. I've got all your back. He nearly did. He changed like a chameleon straight away. Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean, yeah, I hate that Italian bloke. Dock him 10. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I come in just in the nick of time, James. Welcome, welcome. I've got your back, James. I went, <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm, 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 ruth I'm ruthless. Like I'm ruthless. This is Sid up there, like, you know what I mean? And all the times that I'm sticking up for him, like, you know. <laughs> I'm ruthlessly. I'm ruthless. What can I say? You are. You are. But listen, <clears throat> if someone offered us before game week one, top of the table, come this international break, through to the Champions League quarters, come this international break, every single Arsenal fan is taking that all day long, regardless of if it's goal difference or, you know, just a point ahead of City and so on. And that's exactly where we are right now. Um, big up Jordan, Lee, James, hit the like button, people. Make sure you subscribe. Let's not forget that. Put the notification bell on. Do all of that good stuff. And we're here to talk. Make sure you leave your comments too. Um, but where do we start? Where do we start? Jay, you know what, James? I went to the game. Usually I'm talking to you throughout the watch along, sometimes full time, fan cams, etc. This time, not so much. Um, and you predicted it bang on. 1 0. You said it's going to be a slog. You said it's going to go to penalties and. We'll do it. We'll do it in the pens. So I think maybe we start with you. Yeah. I, okay. On a serious note, with the predictions thing, yeah, we do it every week. It's it's a lot like throwing you know what a wall. I'd say the word, but only three minutes in, and I want the monetization after <laughs> nearly ruin the player ratings. But, um, <laughs> you know, and so you get some right. But what I genuinely thought was, are Arsenal after fourteen years going to walk their way into the? Uh, into the last day of the Champions League. I've known this club long enough. We went to penalties with Wigan in the FA Cup when we first needed to lift that trophy. We went 2-0 down to Hull. Like, I've I've seen Arsenal make the simple look very unsimple. So I just thought, here we go. It's, it's our history there. But you know what? We found a way, and that's all I care about. I just needed us to find a way, and we did. Um, I don't think we were great on the night. I don't think we were bad, but I don't think we were good. If we were given the performance a rating, I'd say like a five, and that, and I, I'd struggle to go above that. Um, I think Porto were good. I think Most Porto were anything. good. Um, when I was um, prepping Lee's favourite show this morning, it was actually amazing how, for a tie that basically had two good moments, one from each team, you know, across both legs. And I was trying to break down, like, what was there to talk about? I was actually surprised how much there was to talk about because Porto were tactically really interesting. They really stifled us. They got their wing backs up the pitch. So Saka and Trossard were tracking them all the way back. So we didn't really press them and win the ball high up in, in, in high areas like we normally want to. And then when we did have the ball, 
you have Georgina Rice, two sixes, who should be able to pick up the ball off the defence and play, and they didn't. And Ben White was reluctant to invert. The one time he did was the one time we scored. So it was a tactically really interesting game that basically fell to moments and ultimately fell to nerve in a penalty shootout. Now, penalties are... I think there's an element of luck. You can strike your pen as well as you want. If the keeper guesses right, then they might get to it. But at the same time, it's just an element. A lot of it is hard work and planning and prep and practice. And Arsenal did all that and it got them over the line because you could see they struck every single penalty with utter conviction. And Raya died with utter conviction for every single one. Uh, so we thoroughly deserve that win there. The Emirates crowd were amazing on penalties. Felt throughout we were in and out throughout the game as a crowd, but throughout penalties, I thought they were immense. I've got to say, it was a real cauldron. And uh, lastly, is just to quickly shout out some players that I know some have divided some opinion in terms of how good these players were, but the ones that for me weren't overruled by the occasion and played their football throughout were Raya. Kivior, you might hear my Italian cousin screaming. He's watching the Inter Milan game. Uh, Raya, Kivior, Erdegaard and Havertz. That's not to say they were all like brilliant, nine out of ten, but they're all the ones that for me look like they played like any other game and understood the occasion and understood like kind of what a scrappy game like that required. Um, so they get my special shout outs, but I'm just delighted we made it through. I really don't care how we did it. We found a way. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the main thing. That's the main thing. We had to turn it around. That's what we did. Lee, we was there. Um, yeah. James, James mentioned. Was there as well. James was there as well. Oh yeah, James was there. Sorry, sorry, James was there. Um, but we was there as well. Um, James mentioned the crowd. There was there, there was definitely nervy moments. Hundred percent, mm -hmm. there was nervy moments. Mm -hmm. Seventy minutes in, I remember looking around, thinking, "Yep, yep." You know, it's it's getting to us. You know, we don't really. You know, we're not really familiar with these circumstances at the moment, Champions League, you know, last 16 mm. knockout, it's been seven years since we were there and it's been a hell of a long time since we've been good enough to pass that stage. But um, the team did it, Lee. The team did it. Went all the way to Pens and I guess it's good experience and that's the best thing about it. James mentioned it wasn't a great performance, but the experience of going all the way to a penalty shootout and the experience of facing a side like Porto who've got the dark hearts and the dirty tactics to a T. Um, it will go a long way for this young side. Yeah, I thought we learned. I thought we learned from perhaps um, previous experiences. I think that James is right. I think there was the experience of Jorginho and Havertz who had been there before, um, which was, I thought, key. Um, playing their, their normal games. Um, I, I, I thought uh, Ray had done exceptionally well. Um in the game, I think he made a very, very good save in the game in an important time. I thought the back four defended really, really well. And what I believe that happened in that game was, I didn't think we was great in the game. It was very, very difficult to play really, really well in it because of the way Porto broke it up and things like that. And it shows to me that Porto, even though they're not one of the big boys, they're used to playing Champions League football. They're used to what our, it's, what, what it's about, how to go about it. And we overcome that. The the one thing that was, I, I think, with the fans and and, and um, we was in and out of it, as James says, because I think at the times we was engrossed in the game. I was engrossed in the game. It was like, you know, such a, a tactical game. It could go either way. I think that at times, I'm going to be really honest, I think Porto played some good stuff, which worried us as fans. Um, and you're thinking, oh, they're going to they're going to do it. Uh, I thought that they were exceptional, if I'll be honest, in extra time. How they went about that, we would never look like scoring, if, if I'll be honest. And where I felt in the 90 minutes, we huffed and puffed and looked like we was going to get something. But they stifled that out. Again, experience of playing in the Champions League. The one thing that I will take from the game, and I feel that Arsenal fans have got to do this again, because I do feel that Arsenal fans yesterday contributed to that winning the penalty shootout. Where every time that they had a penalty... I've never heard, it was, you couldn't hear yourself speak with the amount of booing and, you know, waving and stuff and all that. And, you know, like, we need to do that when, when someone gets a penalty in, in, a, in a league game or something like that, because I, it was so off-putting for them. I, I, and I felt that it was very, very important we got it down at the North Bank end. But I honestly felt the fans contributed mm. to that win with that um, uh, penalty shootout. I really think that it got to their players, even with the experience that they've got and everything like that. Because I've never experienced that 
in all the times I've been watching Arsenal, all the times I've been watching Arsenal, I've never experienced that amount of noise for the opposition. And then when we were taking our penalties, the cheering and the scoring and everything like that. Do you know, uh, where, do you know where it comes down to, though? I think we, we've, we as a fan base have never had as much belief in the Emirates era as I think we have now. Mm. And that goes I, for... I that agree. Day. I agree. Yeah. You know, do you know another thing that was, we was, I was talking about this earlier on? I don't know if you agree with this, boys, and people watching. We had a manager, I'm not criticising Arsene Wenger for this, because he had a different way of things and all that, like, you know. Um, but I, I watched Arteta yesterday, uh, yesterday, and he's on the pitch giving it, a, a, and I, I love all that. I've got yeah. to say, you know what I mean? Like, I know Arsene Wenger's different and everybody's different, and I get that. You know, Arsene Wenger would never do that. Um, uh, but I felt it was, you know, like it was connect, connected with, you know, Arteta believes in us fans. I know, I, I don't know what, I don't yeah, know I how to explain it. But I felt that he felt that we was part of that yesterday and I felt part of it. Like, and I do, I, I genuinely walked out of that ground yesterday thinking that I contributed to that game. I felt like I played the game. I was knackered when I got home, I've got to say like. But I, I felt that as a, as a fan base, <laughs> we contributed to that game yesterday. Lee, what one hundred percent? Like, what? Why in all the years that we were great, did we struggle at White Hart Lane? Because the home fans, like, they play a part. Like, and and I just use that example because it's one where I, I think of times where we we're better than Tottenham, and then we somehow drop points there. Like, the crowd a hundred percent contribute. A hundred percent, they play a part. Not just being like, you know, loud and booing, you know, their player every now and again, but just energising our team, just like raising the levels a little bit. I feel like the louder we get, the more we cheer for everything, the more the players just get that little bit of like fuel that matters. Mm. I, I really, I know what you mean. I felt like, you know, I I did my bit. <laughs> and that's why Arteta and everyone calls on us and the fans to do their bit because it makes a difference. Yeah, I, and sometimes it's overdone. You know, I think the I think the fourth minute against Oldham isn't needed, but <laughs> you know, but, but this one I get it. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's nothing worse than you've just taken kickoff. You want to throw it it's like, <laughs> straight you know, in. I'm just sitting down. I'm just fishing my hot dog. I paid seven pound fifty for this. Leave me alone, Martin. But yeah, <laughs> this time it worked. Um, um, is it one of is it one of those that you're gonna seek the positives, or is it one that you're focusing on negatives? No, no, I'll go positives today. I mean, my analysis of the game isn't. I'm gonna repeat what the boys have said, so I'll keep that bit brief. I think that we wasn't great, but I want to start off by kind of crediting, as Lee said, Porto. I thought of the two games, Porto were good without being expansive, or they didn't batter us, they didn't open us up, they didn't pepper our goal but they knew their limitations and I thought they set up really, really well. I think over the two legs, I think we were the better team over the two games. But I think part of why we weren't great is partly because Porto, I thought, mm. tactically played a ve played two very good games against us. I think also it was because there was a little bit of nervousness, I think, amongst the, amongst the players, knowing that if this goes wrong, this is bad. Because I don't want to get negative, but when it got to full time, I thought to myself, if we go out of the cup... <laughs> That's that's pretty catastrophic. That is really, really bad. Um, and as Lee said, I think a pot or two ago, I also think it would have impacted on our Premier League season as well. So yeah. I think to kind of, as James said, find a way and get through was the main thing. What Lee also mentioned, something that I was going to mention about learning. At the start of the season, I remember saying something along the lines of, what I'm looking for is a team to learn lessons from last year. And I really feel that we're on a journey where the, the players are learning how to play in Europe. When the draw was made, I remember a lot of Arsenal fans kind of, even on this platform, oh, Porto, yeah, Porto. Like, Arsenal are better than Porto, but Porto are a seasoned European Champions League playing team. And they may have inferior players to Arsenal, but that know-how, that pedigree of having to, knowing how to manage a two-legged tie, that counts for a lot, and that can be a leveller. So I didn't see it as a, as, a, as a banker to go through. I thought we would go through over the two legs. But it wasn't like a, yeah, they've got Porto, light work. And over the two legs, that's how it proved. So I like to think we're on our journey of learning how to play 
in European competitions. In the next round, you're not going to get away with having the, the element of having much better players. I think that they had the seasoned experience of being a European team, but our quality, I think, ultimately, the two legs came through. In the next round, whoever we play, that gap ain't going to be there. You'll be playing teams that are also seasoned teams in Europe, but they may have as good, if not better, players. So you can't rely on your quality. You need to rely on tactics. You need to rely on heart and all those things that get you over two legs. So I thought Arsenal did really, really well to kind of not play great, but find a way. In cup games, my position... To, to my point last week, I don't care how you play. <laughs> I don't really care. You don't have to excite me. I haven't got, just get through. Cup mm -hmm. games, just get through. And that's what they did. So um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad that they found a way to get through because the alternative doesn't bear thinking. David Rea, that first penalty save, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes keepers save penalties and you think that's a poor penalty. That one wasn't a poor penalty. I, it I wasn't. It wasn't a poor penalty. I, I didn't think any of them was poor. I thought the second the second one wasn't as great a strike. One, right? Yeah, but the first one that is a brilliant penalty. I, I think nerves got to the second one. That was such a you know I mean mm, like maybe. the key one was that second penalty. Like once he got that, that was a that was the key mm. one. But I, 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 you know what I just what you just said there, Joel. My mate Russ said a very very good point yesterday. Um, when he was on the train on the way home, he said like you know, in in a funnier way, the the next round if we play play a better team bigger team might be easier for us because they come out and play and want to play yeah, football yeah. Um, where Porto would have realistically for as you just quite correctly said played both games for penalties they you know they were looking for a nil-nil over there and uh, they managed to get one and they were looking for a, a you know maybe a nil-nil over here or a one-nil they never really changed their game at all even when it was one-nil uh, down when it went one-nil yesterday and I, I think that maybe that's a good thing that when teams will come out and play against us a little bit uh, um, and, and go toe to toe with us, we might might find it that we 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 play better. Um, it's a good point. Um, so yeah, very very <laughs> interesting. But I, I, I'm with you on that. I think that Porto um, made there us no mugs. Made, there yeah, no, mugs. no, they weren't no mugs. I, I, uh, it, I, I felt that we come out of it really really well and. I've got to say two things. Kai Havertz, I thought, like, put his body on the line. I, again, I've got to say, I know, look, it, it, I love it. it. He's had a little push at the manager, like, you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? For that, he's my man of the match. I've got and to he say got that. my favourite yellow card of the game um, when they were breaking and he knew he wasn't catching their midfielder, so he just went, Fuck. Yeah, he's, he's very, he's very, fine. very astute that. what he does. I loved all that, like, you know. Uh, putting himself on the body, and I've got to say, I, I was in awe of Pepe yesterday as well. Like, you know, what I mean, for 41 years, 41 of age, years old, uh, uh, that was an incredible performance from a 41 year old player. Have, have you seen the picture, Lee? Of um, there's a picture going around of it's behind the Porto goal where Trossard has slotted it past the keeper and Pepe's in the background. And then on the above, above it, they split screened it. And Henri, I think 14 years ago, scored pretty much the exact same goal. And Pepe is in the exact same position. Imagine. I think, I think, I think it's 14 no, years. I, I'll put it in the group afterwards. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah oh, think, about the, think about our attack. He's 19 years older than Saka. He's, he's I what, thought he was 17 brilliant. years older than Havertz. About 13, 14 years older than Trossard. Mad. Yeah. Let's have it right. Like the, the standouts were the two captains. And I think as a spectacle, yeah. I thought both ties were trash. I don't think either game yeah. were, were very good. And I don't think the neutrals will take anything in the form of entertainment from those two matches. But I think real football lovers will have come away from that going, Okay, like you can really respect that Porto have done a job on Arsenal here. You can respect that Arsenal were battling with that kind of inner struggle of like, we haven't done this for 14 years, but mm -hmm. the expectation is we do it and we need to find a way. And then that the two that really rose for both teams were their captains, Pepe and Erdegaard. And there was something, you know, people go kind of, oh, vintage football, vintage Champions League, whatever. For me, like... Seeing your captain step up in what is a really, a real struggle of a game of football, like that is kind of, I don't know what I mean when I say old school. I'm hoping one of you can help me like 
say the words but, I'm trying to find, but no, it was one of those, it was one of those performances. A yeah, it was one of those captain performances that when people w- would ask, "Do you think Odegaard's the right captain, or do you think we should give it to to Declan Rice?" I think part of the reason they asked that question, or it's a question asked because people wouldn't have expected this sort of a captain's performance from Odegaard. I hope that makes sense because yeah. it's one of those team on my back ones because the first 30 minutes we was losing first balls and then and we was losing the second balls every single time you know we was we wasn't finding any luck they were stifling us in midfield they was dominating they you know and, and at times working through it and then I noticed a little shift in Odegaard he he he, he positioned himself a, a little different he started winning second balls our goal come from him winning the second ball you know not only him winning the second ball him then his pass of his Arsenal career came yesterday. Oh, that was the pass of his Arsenal career so far. And then on top mm-hmm. of that, listen, we didn't see as much on the ball quality from older guys as we have come to expect or like or love or whatever over the years. But off the, the ball, off the ball, there was no one, no one better than him. People as good, maybe, but no one better than him. I think also as well that, that James mentioned the game wasn't a great spectacle and, and, and they weren't. That's 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 facts. But I just wonder if that's those sorts of get well, that sort of second leg anyway, is gonna stand us in good stead going forward. Because we've been battering teams in open games the last month or so. As we get near to the end of the season, there's gonna be a lot more games like that. We're playing teams at the bottom of the Premier League, there'll be teams that you know trying to get into Europe, and they'll be tight, and there'll be games whereby it's not going to be open. We're not going to be peppering teams. Our first touch might not be great. As Turkey said, we might not win the first or even second balls, but hang in there. And mm. if you've got someone like an Odegaard that can that, that can still kind of keep the belief high, you can hopefully get a 1-0 win. But what I will say also, and I don't know if I made this point before in the pod, but yeah. I, I've always felt, and I can't, I've got no fact to back this up, but I've always felt the Champions League is more important to have a gunman striker than the Premier League. And I just feel that in a game like that, where there wasn't a lot of chances created, I've always felt that the teams that win Champions League normally have a gunman. They normally have a finisher. And I just hope that not having... Trust our great finish, we've got goal scorers, but I just think when you don't get a lot of chances in games, I just still have concerns about, is there someone that in a tight game, when you get one one great chance on the 87th minute you know, can put it away. Do we have that guy? So whilst I think it's good to have those tight games, because I think they make you harder, equally, I fear because I just, I'm still not convinced we have someone that in a tight game can be the, can make the difference. I've got to say that, um, uh, Mikel Arteta got it spot on, didn't we? We were saying, oh, like, let's play Jesus wide left. The Trossard, Trossard mm-hmm. weren't having his great game, but mm-hmm. when it, when, it, when it mattered, the chance, you know, it was a great goal, a great bit of play from Odegaard, but a great finish as well. Under pressure, you know, um, slotted it coolly. He does does get goals, old Trossard, doesn't he? Like, you know, and um, I, I have you, to say, you know, ask, because you said I kind of disagree with you on Mikel, but I want to ask you you all a question on the, on this one. Do you think Mikel was happy with the 180 minutes across the two legs? Do you think he's come out happy? Do you think he's come out with more confidence that this is the way to approach some of these games? Because you mentioned the key one there with Trossard, and Trossard got the goal, so it's easy for everyone to say it was the right decision. But aside from that, he wasn't really in it. He was kind of costing us more than he was doing well for us. So maybe a Jesus would have helped us win the game by a, a better margin. It's hard to really say. Yeah, yeah. I you're saying. Do you I think Arteta's think happy coming out of that, that 100? Well, of well, course you're happy going through, but I mean, tactically, managerial-wise. Can I flip the question? Because I was going to ask, do you guys think that performance was by design? Now, I'm not seeing here saying, do you think he intended to go to penalties? No. But I, what I really mean is, did he play the percentages? I think we talked about, this was about maybe a month ago, we talked about this more controlled style of football actually suiting two-legged games in theory. I don't know if it does in practice, but in theory, if you have more shots, more possession, better field tilt, over 90 minutes in a football match, we know things can happen over 180 minutes. It's probably going to swing more in your favour. 
Now, did he play the percentages a little bit in terms of our quality over 180 minutes will show? And at the very least, we're not going to lose. So let's make sure we're ready for penalties. And that might sound like I'm giving you far too much credit. I might be. I'm not saying I think that's what it was. But the only reason I say this is because once in that game, did he say to Ben White, invert and let's overload the midfield once. And we scored from it. We scored. He inverted. Suddenly Erdegaard had freedom because White was in that channel. And the lovely football we score. The rest of the game, the fullbacks were in fullback positions. They weren't really like, you know, mixing it up, trying to get that overloaded midfield. And then we weren't chasing Pepe and Otavio, their centre backs, when they got the ball. We weren't trying to suffocate them. It looked like we were happy to just sit off a little bit and maybe force that long ball. And that tells me that Arteta, for whatever reason, didn't really want to just hammer it home. He didn't want to try and blow them away. I think he wanted to play a more pragmatic game plan. Yeah, yeah. And you I, and you I, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. What he was what he done you, was you got more he, confidence from it though. Well because it was a penalty shooter in the end penalty shooter. There is a bit of luck to it. Um do you think he's happy? Do you think he'd go again? If if we get Atletico we get into Milan, one of those two sides who will set up in a similar way to Porto in terms of dark arts you know, using the time-wasting tactics and being hard to break down. Do you think this would be the approach from Mikel again to be pragmatic? Or do you think he... Because he's been... He's shown that he can change up this year. He's shown it a few times. I think I think that's the key. I think we've criticised his record in the Cups, his, his, his ability to, to change it up. So I don't know the answer to the question. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I don't know... I don't, I don't know if it was by design or I don't know if this was intentional. But what I do know is that he managed to navigate a banana skin. And I think he did that with the tactics. Um, would he do that again? I, I don't know. But we've all been saying we want Michael Arteta to, to show a bit of flexibility in tactics. Not every game is gun ho gun ho We're better than Porto. So it'd be very, very easy for us to say, at home, let's go for it. And we're one nil down. But he didn't fully do that because I think he recognised, OK, let's not panic. <laughs> we'll be patient. Um, if we go 2 nil down, it's a problem. So I don't know the answer to the question, Turkish, but I do know that I liked that he seemed to have another way of playing in his armour. Do you know what I mean? Because I think that could be something that we need to do again <laughs> down the line. Yeah, no, I get you. Everyone's man of the match, Odegaard. I don't know if that Havertz man of the match was tongue-in-cheek from Lee, because I also like that side of Havertz. But... No, I think, I think um, uh, Odegaard was my man of the match. Yeah. Should have scored. Know. Should have scored yeah. an open goal, but other than that, I thought um, over the over the game, I thought you know he, he was he was fantastic. I think I really liked it. You know, uh, Kivier had a very very good game. I thought the back four played very very well, uh, all all four of them, and Havertz really. Uh, Jorginho done okay. It wasn't. A, I wouldn't say anybody really. I, I know, like we, I, I, I sort of you, you was giving players nines out of tens and things like that. Like I don't think then was the performance was. Really, anybody played really exceptionally well. It was yeah. it was a hard game to play and hard, hard to, to perform in. But um, I, I just think that that for that magic moment, it, you know, because we were struggling at that stage, you know, I don't know if it what what, what it would have been like if we'd have gone nil nil at half time. I don't yeah. know what would have happened. Yeah. I think I think my praise for players came from a different perspective, almost like I was judging them in a different way. And I've seen Arsenal, guys, I'm a, I'm a post-Champions League final fan, right? You've seen Arsenal players get over the line for the really big ones. I've seen us doing FA Cups. So I've seen some bottlers. I've seen people just fluster and, and trip at the big yeah, occasion. No. Or, not, or, or just on a big stage when it's not necessarily a big team, Monaco, whatever it was. And I started to see... Little cracks of players giving the ball away or looking a bit off it again. On a, and I was, I was a little bit tetchy, a little bit worried about it. And so for me, my real admiration, my heart was poured out for the players that were like, I'm grabbing this game. Like, I, I've got this. So every time a ball came into the box and I'm thinking, Porto corner, Porto corner, Porto, Rai went, no, no, you're good. I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. And every time we couldn't play through them, Havertz went, just put it on my fucking head. And we did that. And, and even if we didn't win the second ball, I just love the way he was just fucking throwing himself about and getting stuck in. And then Erdogan went, there's no quality in this game. I'll give you some quality. 
And that's and that's why I gave Kivio such high. Kivio wasn't perfect, but like of the four, he was one that for me didn't look flustered by the occasion. Even if he made an error, it didn't look like he looked bothered by it. He just looked like I've like I'm cool, I'm calm. Then Zinni comes on and starts going, "Let's go." And I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't think. I, do you know what I mean? That's why my yeah, love yeah. was for those players in particular because I was like, "Thank you for getting the occasion and being what we needed tonight." Because I don't think, like, going back to the start of the show when when you know it was suggested it was potentially a not great performance. I think the performance was a minimum six out of ten out there for everyone, bar Saka. And the reason I say that is because it was really Porto doing great in what they was doing. Then it was us being poor. So any mm, moments yeah. there was from a base of six for me, like Havertz sticking, you know, sticking it on the manager or or, or taking the yellow card when, or you know, the, a bit of the dark hearts or yeah, put it on my head if we're not. That pushes him up to a seven for me. You know, with Odegaard, the moment of magic, the pressing from a base of six for me, he was a ten out of ten. It, have I seen him better over ninety minutes in terms of wow on the ball? Of course, because you know he wasn't wow on the ball because he wasn't on the ball as much as we would have liked him to in the spaces we need but that moment you know that moment in a game like that where there's very few if any moments I've got to put it you know I've got to, I've got to maybe overrate it maybe that's what it is but for me Odegaard 10 Havertz 7 few of the defenders 8 and everyone else for me pretty much a six. I thought I thought Rice looked a bit tired. I have to say yeah, from yeah. like from like minute thirty, I was like he is shattered. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I think that was a little bit of a problem. We never really got hold of midfield. And I thought the subs, while Jesus, I thought in normal time had a really good impact. I think he then struggled when he went out on the left. But yeah, mm -hmm. I the Zinni and Eddie, um, which yeah. one? Uh, Jesus good. going to the left? Yeah, and bringing I on. I was talking to your brother walking down to the game and um, he was saying like, you know, Eddie's not getting a chance at all now. It looks like he's being phased out and all that. And I said, oh, I don't think we'll see Eddie much more this time. And then like a massive, massive game like that. Yeah. Um, I think I think he had a bit of a pep moment, Arteta. What I mean by that is, of course, Pep's the GOAT and he's unreal. But you know when he's done things like drop Rodri for a Champions League final, you're like, what are you doing? I think Arteta <laughs> had a bit of a like in the moment... Eddie, D yes, this Eddie, is your time. <laughs> you, we've not seen you for two months. Eddie, you are going to win us this time. Remind them. Yeah. And he did not. And for anyone who's like, oh, agenda, I am a big Zinchenko fan. He was appalling as well. So let's, we'll yeah. keep it, we'll be, keep it fair everywhere. I, I just felt that the subs after Jesus didn't really get it done for me. Yeah, well, they, yeah. They, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't do what I think they were required to do. Yeah, I agree. And there was one moment actually around thirty-five minutes. Was it around thirty-five? Around before we scored anyway. I remember Jorginho like pulling Ben White over and really instructing him on where to be in the midfield when we we're in possession. He was really like there was a there was a stop in play for something. I forgot what it was, but he made sure Ben White comes to. This is where I need you. You know, this is what I need from you. And I thought, even though you know. He, he didn't have the greatest game overall. That moment stood out to me because it was more examples of his leadership and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, anything else one of people, people want to mention from the game? Any we, We've talked about the game overall, the penalty shootout. I mean, all three penalties, beautiful, you know, calm, cool, collected, precise, um, confident. That that can't go under the radar, you know, because as as we're recording, obviously this comes out the day after, as we're recording, I think three pens have just been missed in the Atleti Inter game. And, you know, Arsenal buried every single one. And I'm not going to lie, not one of them looked like missing. Not one of them. They just looked... I, I thought, well, I, I've got to say, I thought the penalties were exceptional. Yeah, they really, really were. And that's a skill. I, I know I said there's an element of luck because, like you said... You know, the, the Porto player, was it Pepe, the, 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 the midfielder Pepe, he struck his quite well and Raya still got to it. So there is yeah. an element of luck. Um, but but you take them really well, you give yourself the best the best chance. Um, and I big up the Emirates crowd, man, for, for making it an absolute cauldron for that penalty shootout. You got the home yeah. advantage in that second leg. You know, you, you take advantage of it. And they did. I think it could have been very easy to be like, how have we gone to penalties with these lot? We've not been great in, what, 190 minutes? No, I can't do maths. In 210 minutes of football. Like, 
you know, you, there could have been a slight deflation. There was not. And yeah, that was big. And now I guess it's just to look ahead to who we want because, yeah. you know, they yeah. I, see when people were saying the Champions League fell off this year. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a very tasty last eight. So, you know, we're part, we're in the thick of it now. Who do we want then? Let's go around. If we, if we could hand pick one team, if we could hand pick one team in the next round, two legs, quarterfinals, who would it be? Selfishly or, or for However, Arsenal? No, whatever you want, whether they're selfish or whether it's the best for Arsenal, like whatever, whatever you want, Jordan. Man City. Swear, Man City. Yeah, Man City. I want Man City. I'm not on this 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 tiptoe thing. I want Man City, and if we lose, we lose. I want to take on Man City. I want to knock them out, and I want to win the European Cup. I want Man City. Like genuinely, I'm not just saying that to be bossy. If we draw Man City in the draw, I will be genuinely. I won't be happy, but I'll be like, yeah. If I can pick the team, I would pick Man City. I know a lot. I know everybody's on this like, oh, I want Dortmund. Oh no, not yet. Not Ma how good are we? We're meant, we're meant to be the best. Let, let's Come hear. On, let's hear go. everyone's selections before Sorry. we debate it. Then let's, no, no, no. Because I was, I wanted to debate it. But uh, Lee, who handpicked one team? On a, on a selfish point of view, like I see what Jordan's saying, but I don't want to go. I'll, I, if we're in the European Cup, first time in the Champions League, I want to, I want to, I want to get my passport out again. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to, I want an away trip. Yeah, and I want to get I the park Manchester out away. Of Ed Park. I am <laughs> going to say, I, 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 I want the biggest one we can get. Real Madrid. Yeah, James. For a selfish point of view. Fair, fair, James. I keep saying Inter Milan, but it looks like they're out. They are out. Um, um, they are out. Martinez just missed his penalty, so so I'm not getting them. Um. Uh, Barcelona, I want snap Barcelona for me as well. I don't want Atletico, you know, bearing in mind they just went through. I, I want Barcelona, man. I want Barcelona. Yeah, can I just say about that? I would go, go, go on Barcelona, but they're not in the new camp, are they? They're in another stadium. It's uh, selfish. Uh, I, I, know, I know, I know, it's selfish. It's not about your trips to trips around Europe, Lee. You know what I mean? It's not about yeah. your trip, mate. <laughs> yeah. Where are yeah, they not, playing? They're in Marbella, not in Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah. Where are they I mean, playing? Uh, they're, they're playing in Spain somewhere, but it's like an athletic. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought it'd be in Spain, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're reading they're in, the new they're camp. In, they're in Luxembourg it could have been, somewhere. It could, have been in, yeah. it, could have, it could have been in Tenerife. Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you, don't mind doing, you, you don't mind doing your home games in it's Edinburgh, somewhere in yeah. Barcelona it's an athletic track, track in Barcelona I'm not sure but I know it's not their their stadium Hackney <laughs> Marshes <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona's Hackney Marshes yeah like you know, Barcelona so, yeah. I, I don't even think it's got a stadium it's a, Ronaldo can get down there Barcelona can get down there. oh yeah <laughs> It's an Olympic state, 56K. Listen, it's something different. It's something El Clasico different. brought to you from Tooting. <laughs> Where is it? Is it an Olympic stadium, is it? Yeah, it's an Olympic stadium in Barcelona, yeah. So the world, where they've done the Olympics, right, yeah? They got Tooting. Something like that, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, look, listen, I, I, I don't know. I understand Real. I, 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 that's that's why we want to be in the Champions League, to face the best. I, I just want Barcelona for a bit of revenge. But I mentioned I don't want Atletico. I certainly don't want Man City in the next round either. Oh, like, uh, well, well, who do you want? Like, say, like, that's a great question. Like, you know, uh, what, what, what do you want, man? What would you like, Man City to have Atletico and then Bayern yeah. or, or Atletico. someone like, that, like mm. Atletico? Atletico I, I, for me. I think Bayern, the, the the team to not watch in terms to win it, but I think they're the kind of weird dark horse. Everyone's written them off because they're struggling in the league. I, I, first of all, I don't think the league's over there yet. I've, I've not totally written off Bayern winning that league, although it's not looking good for them. But if you look through their squad, their squad is serious. It is a, they got they got ballers in their squad. If they can turn it on over a two-legged game, they're going to hurt someone. I know Tuchel's kind of sucking the life out of them, but, but if you're going to ask me who, who I don't want, it's probably Bayern. It's probably sure. Bayern. Um, but yeah, I, I just got a feeling Bayern are not done this season yet. Um, so yeah, well, I'm... You were talking about the gunman thing, and there's no better one than Harry Kane or, or Erling Haaland. Actually, I think Kane. 
Haaland's a better goal scorer or Kane's a better player. And I don't even know if he's a better goal scorer. I know he's yeah, not maybe not, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe actually this season the chances Haaland's missed. That's a, yeah, fair. Mm. I, I I think you're right that the, the the quality they've got. They're the kind of team you could dominate, and then they've just slipped one through to lose. Bang Leroy bang, Haaland, two then, goals. Yeah, oh, and it's like oh, okay. you know. I can't lie. I'd love it to be Barcelona quarters, Bayern semis, and then whoever in the final. Just get the revenge out of the way leading up to a final. I don't care who, who it would be. If we get to a final, then... Well, the dream would be Bayern in the final because then we could beat them and Harry Kane still would be trophyless at Wembley as well. So, I mean, that did would you, be funny uh, for me personally. Did you hear... <laughs> the, sorry, the Bundesliga top scorer gets a cannon as a... Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no. just the, the guy can't catch a break. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna say it now, like, and I'll say it yesterday, and it's tongue, tongue in cheek a little bit. I, 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 if we do get to the final at Wembley, you know, what I mean, we've got a good record against Man City at Wembley, you know, what I mean, like, I, I'm well, well, Lee, I'm also looking at if we draw City, we've got them three more times a season, we've got to win one, <laughs> we've got to win one of them. <laughs> You know what I mean? So oh, bring bro. it on, man. Yeah, bring I'll it on. So you would want Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool. Hmm. They want to. You know what it is with me as well with English clubs? PTSD, man. Man United, Chelsea, Wales Bridge, Liverpool. That Theo Walcott, and then all of a sudden a pen. I can't lie, we haven't. Yeah, in we the haven't account. won one, have we? Nah. <laughs> No, we haven't beaten, we haven't won one. We lost every one. We've played English teams, we've lost. I'm not interested, man. Give me Barca, give me Bayern, and then then whoever if we can pass them. Yeah, I, I yeah, I agree. I mean, like the the perfect narrative is that revenge run you're talking about. But I guess my question for all of you is like we've done okay. Well, I think we've done what I think a lot of us would admit was the bare minimum from this Arsenal team, which was to qualify at your group top, beat the teams you should beat, and make it to the to the quarter finals. We've done that. Good. We've managed to get past that hurdle that has eluded us for 14 years. Are Arsenal ready for Barcelona? Are they ready for Bayern Munich? Are they, you know, did, did this Porto tie teach us? It taught us one of two things. Either Porto are a lot better than we thought they were, or that we're just not really ready for what European football kind of holds. Or, or and I'll throw a third one in there, that actually it was always going to be difficult just to get over that hurdle that has eluded us for 14 years. And that actually now we've kind of done that. We've overcome that. I don't know. I, what, do you, what do you think? Do you know what, James? Ajax were a couple of years ago, you know, when when they beat um, everybody and then lost to the Spurs. And they should never have lost to Spurs. Like, were they, they, they just attacked it and just were a breath, breath of fresh air. And they was a very, very young side as well, like, you know, and... Um, yeah. The reason it never went on is because it was um, that that great team was broken up very very early. Like this Arsenal team won't be broken up. I, I, I listen. I, I still say in this European Cup you need a little bit of luck. Did we get a little bit of luck yesterday when the ball hits the post and it bounces off his leg mm. and goes wide? You know what I mean. The chances are that it bounces off your back and goes in, and everybody's all you know. And you think, oh. I think luck does play a big part in this. And I think like tomorrow, oh, sorry, on Friday, that draw will make a big bit of luck because it's not only the quarterfinals you get, it's the semifinals also. Uh, so we know we're getting the semifinals if we get through to that. Um, oh, the path will be there for us. And, you know, listen, it could be, you know, we could miss the big guns. It could be Bayern Munich and uh, Barcelona clash and Man City and um, Real Madrid crash. And and then they play each other in the semi final, and you know we mm. we play Dortmund in one of it, and and I, I, listen, PSG can't be uh, written off by the way uh, after what they done this uh, this week. So mm. part you know, of like, you don't know. You, you, I, look, you could take on PSG and think right, oh no, we're in trouble, and then, and and, and Papi gets injured, and then you don't play two games without him. You need a lot of luck in this competition, like you know, so. Part of what um, part of what made made me concerned beginning of the season is that I just felt with a young side going controlling can kind of be a, very risky. You know, it's a mature thing to do to control games. You know, at the highest level. Um, so I thought doing it with a young side would be very bold. And then the turn of the year comes and the, the excitement comes back a bit. Going back to the point about being ready. You know, 
will Arsenal ever be ready without their first Champions League? It kind of feels like that without even getting over the line with, with one, the question mark will always be there. And I'm glad to see, not in the two legs against Porto, because I didn't, but I'm glad to see that the excitement has come back. The the handbrake, in a sense, has been lifted this calendar year because I do think in the Champions League, you also need a bit of that. As much as you need to be tactically mm. astute and, 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 you know, fine detail and fine art tactically, I get that. But going back to teams like Monaco, like Dortmund a few times, because Dortmund won it in 96, 97, they, and they've competed a few times. Um, Napoli have done it a few times. No one can say these teams have been ready, but they've pulled out massive moments against teams that everyone thinks ready every season, whether it's a Real Madrid or a Man City. or but, a, so, but, but, the, but the common theme with them, including Ajax, tended to be young team, manager that, you know, lets them play football in an attacking sense and they're exciting, you know, they're off the cuff. It's hard to really manage them tactically. So I'm glad to see that we we can revert back to that. But will we in the Champions League is what kind of I alluded to earlier, asking if Arteta's happy with the 180 minutes. No, no you're totally bang on, Turkish. But what I would say is that apart from Dortmund, all of those teams you've named didn't didn't win it. And if you look at, I'm thinking as I talk right, right now, all the teams that have won the Champions League in the last 15, 20 years, they've all had three, four, five, six years leading up of heartbreak. And I, I just think you've got to go through some heartbreak before you win it. Look at Chelsea. They went out in devastating fashion to Barca, to Monaco one year, I think, to United, I think, in one final. Look at United. I remember years they got knocked out by Leverkusen one year. Monaco. So every team that wins it, Man City, knocked out by Spurs, knocked out by um, Lyon. Lyon. Do you know what I mean? So I think every team that ends up winning it, apart from Madrid and maybe AC Milan, who have got like pedigree of the last 30 years, You've got to go through the, a bit of heartbreak before you get there. My, I'm repeating myself, but my only concern about us, and I, and I saw it in the first first leg <clears throat> against Porto, is a team that has talent, has a brilliant manager, and a team that's on form. But in the European Cup, pedigree counts. Mm. I don't care how big your club is. I don't care what players you've got. If you've got that pedigree of knowing what it's like on European nights and how to manage 90 minutes, even when you're 1-0, even 2-0 down... That counts for a lot. That experience is why City didn't win it until last year. That's that's why United didn't win it until 99. I know they won it before, but in that situation under, under Ferguson. So I think that the pedigree of having been there and been there and just missed out, I think that counts for a lot. And we've not had that. I know we've been to a final, but that was in a, a different era of Arsenal. This era of Arsenal, we are novices. We are talented. We've got we're on form. But I just fear about A, lack of a gunman, and B, that 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 know how that kind of we know what Europe's like. A little a little scenario though, um, five games to to win the Champions League now. Mm, yeah, that's yeah, five yeah. games. A couple of them you can afford to draw. I think it's maybe is it easier to win the Champions League now than win ten games in the Premier League? Two draws, three wins wins the Champions League. Mm. I think it's easier. So is the Champions League easier to win at this stage now than than the Premier League? I, I, I think it is. I, I think it is for that exact point. In the Premier League, I think we're going to have to be almost perfect. I think we're yeah. going to win nine games now. I think we've got to win nine games out of the ten. The Champions League, as you said, you can draw two. <laughs> you can draw two. I think the Champions League just levels out the playing field a little bit. You know, the nature of the competition. Like, like I think if you're the best team in the Premier League, aka Man City it's easier for you to win the Premier League than it is to win the Champions League because it's less random. Over 38 games, you play the best football, you score the most goals, you concede the less, you're the best team, you accumulate the most points and you win it. Whereas in the Champions League, that levelling out brings everyone closer to your level. So for us, whether if we're not the best team in the Premier League, some might argue we are, um, if we're not, then that levelling out in the Champions League of, well, actually, we can draw at the Etihad and that's fine. We might nick a 1-0 like we did this time. You know, that I think would make it seem easier. So I think it just depends the lens you're looking at it through. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And, and, and the draw on Friday will go a long way to 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 see that which one. Looking forward to it. And you guys are looking oh, forward 100%. to it. 100%. Yeah. Right. yeah, I'm I looking mean, forward to it. If, it. if it wasn't that early, I would have, yeah, I would have enjoyed 
it made it a bit of a bigger occasion than it is because it's been a while since we've been in quarter final stage of the Champions League with the belief that we can go further. You know, mm-hmm. that's the key thing. It's the belief. It's not just being in the quarters. It's the belief that we can get it into the semis. It's the belief that we can make it to the final this year. It's the belief that at Wembley we've got a good record. I'm just glad that's back. You know, but we can talk about everything else after the fact, whether we win it or not. We can talk and we can, you know, we can answer questions and stuff. But the fact of the matter is, a, a fan of foot, Arsenal Football Club should be feeling this way every single season, where the season feels like it's going quick. This season, I've heard a lot of fans say, "Yo, this season's gone quick." This is how competitive seasons always go. Yeah. They used to yeah. go quick back in the day as well because you just yeah. you're not thinking too much. They 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 started slowing down when in February we're out of everything, watching everyone else compete. Yeah, and, and it was like one game a week, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Just one thing before we leave the Champions League and all that. Do you think that um, going now because we got to the quarterfinals? There's a little bit of pressure off now. I felt like we we had to yeah, get yeah. through this round now. now. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah. we do pull a Real Madrid or we pull a, you know, if we was to go out, it's one of the big boys. Um, well, we yes, like, to know. Right, yes, we're I know. Now we're gonna we're gonna go for it. Can I put it this way? And while it contradicts what I said about how good Porto were, I think we don't need extra time and penalties to beat Porto if we play them in the quarters. Now that might sound ridiculous. Some might. Some might be in the comments being like, James, you're talking utter ass. I just think, I just think it was so much of the occasion was also we haven't done it for 14 years. Yeah, true, yeah. And yeah. And look, Porto were really good. I've given more than enough credit to Porto on, on AFTV since since full time in that game. But I, I can't help but feel that Arsenal need to shake something off here. Um, and they've done that now. And actually the quarterfinals, weirdly you'd think it's more pressurised because you're closer. I think this is where Arsenal can actually be almost the plucky underdogs a little bit. We can be the surprise package and we can be... Up to this point, everyone's expected us. You've got to finish top of that group. Look at that dream group you got. You've got to beat Porter. What great... It, now we're at a point where it's kind of levelled out. Now everyone's going, you're about to see Arsenal. And it's our chance to go, mm, no, you're about to see because we're actually going to show you we belong in this pack. That would be... That's how I. Th- that's why I think the pressure might be alleviated on these players. Slightly off, slightly on topic, but moving into a different way. You mentioned on the walk back from the stadium yesterday, James, that this win has not necessarily taken the pressure off Etihad, but it's mm-hmm. made it less of a season definer in terms of going out of the Champions League and heading to Etihad. A loss would have felt. Like a How damning blow, a damning blow. It would have felt like here, here we go. Everything's gonna unravel. I'm not saying a loss would be acceptable even now because I think we should win. I think we should get a positive result. Um, but now we're through in the Champions League. We're top of the Premier League. Like whoever it was in the next game week, regardless of the outcome, we're in a healthy position. It just happens to be City at the Etihad. I, I thought that was massive yesterday for our chat, for for our title hopes. I know it's a different competition. Said it before, said it afterwards. You know what I mean? And that was the relief for me. Another two games, so we ain't sitting around in a week stewing on the next game and whatever. Like you know, let's say like if we go to City and beat City, all right, we've got then Luton. Okay, like straight after that. But say if we beat, um, I don't know, I can't think of a team with Brighton on the Saturday. And then we've got to wait a whole week to take on Aston Villa. And then after we beat Aston yeah. Villa, we've got another week to take on Spurs, you know. Now we've got, like, games in between where it, you, you 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 can't be thinking and dwelling on that, like, you know what I mean? You get onto that game, get onto that game. I, I just think that this is so much, so, so important for us, this game yesterday. Mm. Uh, and I do think that if we'd have lost this game, there would have been... The negative vibes, and I'm not even going to go at Arsenal supporters because they're entitled to have this opinion. <laughs> oh, is, is is Mikel not the man? Is is he not got the European pedigree to take us to this and this and all that? I'm not saying that's gone now, but it's put on the back burner now for for the Man City game and a couple more league games. You know what I mean? So, look, listen, if we can get a result at the year, yeah, go and beat Brighton, go and beat. Uh, Aston Villa we've got that cup game again then coming in there and it all goes on again like you know so wow. I, I, I 
I can't emphasise our, our, in, in my opinion, that was so, so, so important. Like, and it's no coincidence we lost to Olympiacos last year about this time. Not like, who did we lose to? Um, Sporting oh, this, this time last year, and the wheels fell off. You know, I mean, we lost. We, we had a fantastic performance against Fulham, beat them three 0 Then we had this, and then we went up to uh, to Liverpool, and it all went went wrong. I, I do think that that had a, 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 an impact on us. Yeah. I, I just want to briefly, sorry, just go back to the last question, Turkish. I'll be super brief. Going back to, would it be a good season? Now we've got to the quarterfinals. I think it is, but I, I remember at the start of the season saying on multiple podcasts, I expect all the Europe, all the English teams across the European competitions. The bare minimum for me is quarterfinals. So I think Villa should win the Europa League conference. I think Liverpool should win the Europa League. I think for City, it's final minimum. United and Newcastle, it was quarters minimum. I thought for Arsenal, it was semi-final. Because you think of the resources that the English Premier League teams have and the lack of quality there is currently across Europe, across all the competitions. England have a massive advantage. The Premier League, the Premier have a massive advantage. So I think for Arsenal, quarters is the super bare minimum, but really the semis is the minimum. The last four, when you think of the players we've got, the money we've spent, I think the last four is 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 the, should be the expectation personally. Um, when you think of what we've got, and a draw will go a long way in 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 you know seeing how confident we can be about the semi finals. <laughs> I don't disagree, but until the draw comes about and we see, you know, who we're up against, then then there might be a debate. The um, is, and that's why that Porto game was a lot of pressure on that, because if, if we lose to Porto, right, they're never going to win it. They're going out in the next round and all that, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to go, you know, we might get, as, as Jordan gets his wish and gets uh, Man City, Man City could go on and win it. You know what I mean? There's a little bit more, you know, credibility if you go mm-hmm. out to a team that's winning it or get to the farm, but you know that, that Porto would not get, you know, if, if Man City got Porto next round, you know that Porto are going out. So I think that that's important. That that was a little bit of pressure on us last night to get through. We've done it. Yeah, we've done it. Uh, we're nearly coming up to an hour in 57 on the dot. Um, have you hit the like button yet, people? Have we hit a thousand likes? Check quickly. If not, make sure you hit the like button. Do all of that stuff. Make sure you're subscribed here. All individual channels as well. I'll put it in the description. Why not? And let us know your man of the match. Who do you want in the next round? Most importantly, Friday morning, the draw. I think it's starting around 11 a.m. We'll be going live. Um, me and James will be there. Right, well, there I say they're here. AFTV. So make sure you're subscribed. Um, and we'll move on to the prediction table. No predictions because Man City is so far away. It's international break. We'll be doing the show closer to the time, so we might as well save it till then. But there has been a little, I say shake-up. It's not really a shake-up, but an extension to his lead at the top with another correct score for James. He's now on 35 points with four correct scores. I'm in second on 29. Lee's in third on 27. And Jordan's in fourth on 25. A whole 10 points behind. That look miserable, Lee. Wow. That's bad. Lee's, Lee's gutted. Look at him. <laughs> well, I am gutted, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, do you know, we are, you, how can I say it without being nasty? Um, <laughs> we're in an exclusive club, me and you, Turkish. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I don't really want anybody else coming into that club. I hear you. I hear you. You hear, you hear what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and then yeah. it's. Yeah. And See, then, and you're the, the issue of this country. You're the problem of this country. Worst one. <laughs> <in here. laughs> yeah, why are you saying you want me to come back and win it? If you want me to do that, I'll do that. Just let me just say the word. I can do well, it. Do you know what I mean? It's part of it, isn't it? Like, you know, you didn't want Chelsea to win the Premier League because then you they're another London team that's won it, you know what I mean? And James is my Chelsea, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Well, this man, man, he me, cannot man. do anything to stop him coming into the club. He's sort of like got his VIP pass ready and waiting. This is how Liverpool and United fans felt about City last year, and if we win the Champions League this year, so just embrace it. It's fine. James, one hand on the prediction table title. Yeah. Now nah, listen. I, don't, don't, bottle don't, don't bottle it. Don't bottle it. I've bottle said it. this before. I've said this before, everyone. <laughs> I'm just here to finish ahead of Lee. That's all I'm here. For. I've got no title aspiration. I've got no ambition. Um, I'm a bit of a joke, to be honest. I'm going to be a Spurs. Here. Do a Spurs. 
Yeah, yeah. Sort of stopped his one-one crap though, wasn't he? Do you notice that he started getting to 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 the winning match? You know when he was down the bottom. That's what I don't like about him. When he was down the bottom, uh, one-one. One one, but now he's winning. I've not heard a one one from him for I don't know how long. Like that. that's, that's what it, you know. He's an irritable bow, isn't he? Like you know, I mean, this is what we're doing. Like, I mean, he's oh, an one irritable bow. <laughs> <laughs> what a description! What a description! Um, let me get rid of the prediction table. No predictions to make. Big up James um, with the correct score. We have one before the City game. Yeah, we're going to do one before that, are we? Yeah, yeah, we'll do one before that. I actually also think that we do it in person. One. I think we need to. I think we need to be doing a special. People like the 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 um the quiz that we did against each other. People liked the draft show we did. So what I'm going to ask the people, all right, listen, people, we're going to come back for the Man City game in a couple of weeks because that's, you know, over a couple of, over a couple of weeks away on the 31st. So we'll be back for that that week. But next I've week, what one. do you want to see? Well, Lee's got one, but what do you want to see, people? Let's hear Lee's. I've got an idea which you could go in it. Your favourite Arsenal 11. You don't have to be the best players, but mm-hmm. your favourite Arsenal 11. So your favourite players. Could be, could yeah, be. Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, Agree with me. Comments. Again, I'm going to pin a comment. Let us know under the pinned comment, people. We saw the reaction to the live show. Uh, more than enough numbers for us to go ahead and... and oh, go yeah, brilliant. That will see that. Fantastic, yeah. Oh, £5 pound a ticket. Light work. Come on, guys. Man Tickets said, last week you told them you can get the place for 70 quid. Now you've told them 35 quid a ticket. Now we've got to have a bit of beer money, Turkish. That's right. It's cheaper yeah, than the Arsenal. You know. well, at that price, you might be able to buy the whole property, let alone fucking How much money, was How much for a ticket? If three people come, we made back our money. <laughs> we made profit if three people come. How much did you say for a ticket? 35 he quid. 35 pounds. 35? I thought he said 25. Oh, I thought he said five. <laughs> No, 35, you bad man. 35? No one's going to pay 35 to watch you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're coming along as well, Lee. <laughs> We've got to oh, be well, well. That's why I said a fiver. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean like, you know, just give them value for money. Yeah, I think five. Four ninety nine. Eight Eighty five people at five pound. How much is that? Eight fives. Eight fives? 45? Oh, no, 40. No, 40, yeah. 40, so 400 quid. 100 quid each. Split it. Look at Jordan's face. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I, would imagine, I would just... imagine the AFTV want to cut of this. Yeah. <laughs> Considering we're on their channel. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could break away, James, do our own little... Oh, little I'll tenor a ticket in. Tenor a ticket in. <laughs> I've got a production team at Big Six. I'll bring them along. Same. Four, same. We, we can yeah. link up. We can do this. Yeah. What's oh, that? Oh, the club did it. Well, we're Jenny's not saying, not saying it. it behind their back, are we? It's fucking on this on the channel. <laughs> how, no, how noble. <laughs> and look, Rory Jennings and Adam McCoy and them guys broke away from the kickoff. You know, we could break away from AFTV and do our own little thing. No? No, okay, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe All right, not. Cool. Um, this kind of language is going to get Sheroy moved in very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's on the phone to him now. I've always liked You're in. Sheroy. Sheroy, don't you pay that fight? Don't you pay that twenty five pounds, Sheroy? Don't you pay it? Like you know what I mean? <laughs> He'd be expecting a freebie off the of Turkish anyway, like you know what I mean? So, Probably. Yeah. Listen, don't talk about my lawyer like that, please. <laughs> comments of the day, we ready? Because it was a oh, a yes. very good week yeah, of comments, really in one. my opinion, a very good week indeed. Yeah, yeah. good comments, good comments. All right, who wants to go one. first? We've all got like because me and James had we were speaking about it yesterday. I don't so I've changed mine. Uh, no, no, I've, no, I've, go for it, Lee. Go for it. You, no, no, you... no, I've changed mine. Go on, you go for it. Go on, all right, well, it. okay. I'll give two because I feel like this is the generic one that everyone saw. I got the most likes, deserved from JC saying, Big up to Turkish's son for now attending more Arsenal games than Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, I got um, that. <laughs> and I have another, but I'll let you guys go. And if it's not read out, I'll give it a read. Yeah. All right, I'll go on this. I've got a few. So, first of all, big up um all the people that said they wanted to uh, see a live show because there was a lot of a lot of support for a live show. So let's try and make that happen, fellas. Secondly, big up all the people that um I bumped into someone on the way to the gym this morning. 
um, that's watched the show and he said, oh, um, yeah, my sister's got a disability as well. So big up and thank you very much for flagging it. So there was a lot of love and support um, for for the for the, the section we did on the last show. But some of the comments I've got, so I've got a few. So I've got one here from Daniel Kelly. Jordan, my wife loves you. She's a massive fan for 60 years. Arsenal, I'm assuming. Her health has declined and she cannot walk far along a lot of other other persons had things going on in her life that she's disabled. Um, so, and I've not got the rest of it because I've just screenshot it here. But I want to big up Daniel because one, um, I, I like when people <laughs> are open about personal things in their life. But more important than that, his wife loves me. So that's what really, really piqued my interest on that particular comment. So I want to big up Daniel, first of all. Uh, you next one. Screenshot in the rest of the comment. You know what? I, it's, it's all long. Yeah, it's kind of click to read more and all that. It's long. It's, long. It's, it's all long. Um, the other one I've got here is uh, I had to check this one. It's a Jordan with a classic line I can walk, I can run, I can have sex. And Lee immediately looks up. <laughs> Did I just hear that on one minute for one hour 14? <laughs> and I watched it back. <laughs> Lee looks off like, what the <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Um, another one here from Paul Shelbourne. Love the cast, boys. Just subscribe to all four of your be just subscribe. I can't read to all four of you beautiful gits. So, uh, big up, um, Paul. Uh, and the last one was last time I had a nasty gash, it took at least six weeks till I was back balling again. <laughs> <laughs> big up, MS4. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, yeah, if yeah, you don't know, watch the last pod. Hundred <laughs> percent. Catch up, catch up. Big up as well. Hundred k people watch the last one. So love for the love, Good people. Numbers, always. Yeah, I've got a couple um comments of the day. They haven't been read out yet. My one first one is from Baza. Got to appreciate how Lee is always willing to tell us things right now rather than wait until later. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That was that was my next one. That is, is yeah, <laughs> that was class. <laughs> and Muaz, big up Muaz. He says. Quote, that's why I couldn't be a Chelsea fan. You're having a pretty hard time being an Arsenal fan too, mate. That one's to Jordan. I didn't get that one, though. I saw that, but I didn't understand the joke. I didn't get it. What was he trying to say? Every week we were winning games and you come out with the negatives before the positives. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. How can you not see that? I see, sorry. So I, I, I read that. I didn't quite get what... It, sorry, I, can't, I get it, I get it. I get it. <clears throat> uh, who's up next? Uh, Lee. I've gone for KPAFC. AFC, shall I say. The way Jordan dropped how you feel about Ramsdale was like a gunshot. And it was. It was totally <laughs> unnecessary. Like, you know, totally unnecessary. You know, and it did make me laugh. <laughs> you know, but he just couldn't wait to bring it in. Like, you know, yeah. like, you know. and, yeah. and, and I would have to say, I've also been accused of falling asleep on the last pod, which is a total lie. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I've never do that in forever after. I'll never do that, like, you know. You were struggling. I'll never do that unless I was with Emma Sleep. You know what I mean? Bit, like, you know? <laughs> Emma Sleep. Can I uh, like, chuck one last one in? Go on. From Wasim. I was I was scrolling through, so I don't think any of you read this one out. Apologies if you did. Um, jo Jordan, we pay hell a lot of money to be entertained. Also, Jordan, during the Porto away match, I've watched Chris Eldron. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that too. <laughs> but both things can be true. Like, what's the? Both things can be true. And I want to big up all that. There were some people that actually agreed with my position regarding Arsenal Entertainment. So I want to big up those people, all the idiots that really didn't understand what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it polite. So, so how you feel, Jordan? Just tell me. Yeah, I always do. I always do. I know that, mate. All right, big up Jordan, big up Lee James, as always. Hope you've enjoyed people forever, Arsenal. And we will be back next week with one of your recommendations in the comment section below. Pinned comment in the <clears> comment <throat> section below. Or we'll go with Lee's one if that's what you agree with. Just let us know. We'll have a special show next week based around your thoughts. And then we'll be back for the Man City um, usual preview show um, the week after that. A massive one. So um, we'll make sure we do that early enough that week so you can digest it before the fixture and the yeah game comes about uh make sure you subscribe to hit the like button subscribe to the individual channels in the description below love for the love peace we're out